Cause like a winter Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. Today's show is fabulous. We're gonna be exploring the world of boxing with Kerry Williams, Olympic certified boxing coach who owns three boxing clubs called Primetime Boxing. Welcome to the circle, Kerry. Well, thank you. Well, this is kind of different. I know we've been exploring the psychology of athletes. We've been exploring the psychology of boxers, but never a female boxer. So <laughs> right. I have to find out, how did you get involved in this? Uh, well, I was raised by my father, and I was an only child, and grew up in a, a fairly rough neighborhood. So uh, I guess growing up, uh, you learn how to defend yourself pretty early on, and so my father started kind of teaching me some moves here and there. Uh, and then as I got older, I met a professional boxer, um, ironically, and uh, he became a head trainer of mine. We opened a club, and that was back in 1998, and uh, that's kind of how it all unfolded and let me go back a little bit did your dad ever box no he didn't no oh. he i remember him having nunchucks which is kind of funny but <laughs> yeah, nunchucks <laughs> but not Chuck boxing. Morris days, that's right yeah. <laughs> now did he um do you look back at it and say what was my dad teaching me that's not was an uppercut what was that thing right well i was so young i really didn't even think about what he was teaching me i was just more concerned about making it to the store to get my candy and back without getting you know beat up so uh, <laughs> Well, but yeah, I, I learned more about the sport uh, as I got older, and uh, I started working out. Actually, I hadn't even boxed yet and opened uh, my first club, and it became very busy. So I was at the front, and then I had to be on the floor, and I started learning how to then train boxers. How old were uh, you when you first got into boxing? Uh, I actually wasn't, I was 25 years old. Oh, so okay. for, for a boxer, that's, that's a lot older than usually you start. Competitively, mm -hmm. you know, you're, when you're a champion in boxing, you usually start when you're probably about eight years old. Eight. So yeah, wow. so you look at the De La Hoya and you know Mayweather. They start when they're children. So, uh, uh, but for for women because they're not as many of us, then you know we can get into the sport a little later in life and still do very well with it. Uh, but you know again, I didn't really compete in boxing until after opening my first club. Um, you know, I was training children and, and training teenagers and adults, and they all started wanting to compete. So once they wanted to compete, then I thought, well, if I'm training them. It's a little hypocritical to not have been in the ring and fought before. <laughs> so uh, I, I told my head trainer I want to fight, and so he started training me, and voila, I was in the ring. Wow. <laughs> How many coaches are there, Olympic certified coaches? Uh, coaches there, are, there are about five female coaches at my level in uh, boxing. And that's under, under USA. Yes, that's wow. under USA Boxing. So not a whole lot of us. Really lucky to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you again for being on here. Yes. Let's explore the psychology show. So we're going to explore the brain of a boxer here. Oh. What was it like? Um, you said you, you boxed a little bit when you were younger. Because your dad taught you some moves? Or well, you... not boxing. It okay. was self-defense. Self meaning, well, let's call it street fighting. Street fighting. <laughs> All right. I was a little scrappy. <laughs> Unfortunately, not, not, you know, not by choice, but it was really more for self-defense. And, so, um, and I think that's really important, I think, for a lot of um, youngsters growing up, whether they're women, guys, whatever. Uh, when you get picked on, you, you need to kind of fight the bullies is basically what it comes down to. Do you find so. you have to do a lot with that in your, in your job right now? Do you have to help a lot of young people defend themselves against bullies? Uh, there was there was a fair share. There are a fair share of uh, teenagers. You know, they have that. They're in the middle school kind of age range, and they're having that transitional. Um, you know, kind of. They have this thing going on where it's they're getting used to their bodies, and then everybody else is looking at them like, oh, you're too this, you're too that, you're not enough of this, you don't have nice clothes, you're. You know, it's it's all of these different elements, and so uh, they start to get picked on, and yeah, they. They want to come in and learn how to throw a proper punch. <laughs> Be a boy or a girl, it doesn't matter. Knock them out. So let's go forward a little bit then. So you said you started around 25. Right, uh, boxing, boxing, actually, yeah. Did you notice uh, people looking at you differently? I mean, did they just Absolutely. say, you're a boxer? You know, wait a minute. Did it affect your dating life? Did it, what kind of, did it impact your life? It, yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, they do look at you, and the first thing they would say to me, and I, this is really, I, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird to say, but they would say, oh, you're too pretty to be a, a boxer. 
you don't look like a boxer. And I was like, well, what does a boxer look like? <laughs> I, I mean, I learned defense first. That was the first thing I learned. So that way I wasn't getting hit a lot. Uh, and defense is the hardest thing to learn in boxing. So if you can learn that first, then you have a much easier road ahead of you to then learn your hands, which is all the punches. So uh, I learned defense first, and that was great. Um, so it, it kept me, you know, <laughs> kept my face the way it is. Uh, but yeah, so, and the funny thing is, um, the best compliment I ever had was I was in the ring sparring one time, and I was sparring with boys because it was mostly boys. And uh, one of the teenagers, his father was outside the ring, and I stepped out of the ring, and he said, you fight like a boy. And it was the best compliment I ever had. You can tell me I'm beautiful. You can tell me whatever. But you tell me I fight like a boy. And it was just like, oh, wow. It was amazing. So uh, That so was a compliment for you. It was a huge compliment. And so I, um, I actually came up with a brand called Too Pretty. And so the first line was never too pretty to hit like a boy. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, there's just, there's a lot, there are a lot of girls out there doing a lot of male dominated activities that, you know, you don't have to look like a boy to do uh, something, a sport, a job or something to that effect that is male dominated. So uh, that's really kind of the whole premise of it. <laughs> Excellent. Interesting. So uh, how does it, how do the males, when you go on a date, I mean, do you notice, oh, this guy's intimidated by me or, or are you dating guys who have a stronger personality? That's what happens yeah. is that, yeah, I think because uh, I would have to be with somebody very, very, um, very secure with themselves mm -hmm. and not be intimidated by me. If they're intimidated by me, then they're probably not the person for me is kind of what it comes down to. Interesting. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's explore a little bit more. How hard have you ever been hit in the ring? Ah, uh, uh, let's see. Hard enough to make me think twice about being in the ring, but uh, <laughs> never knocked out in boxing. Um, but oh, I, yes. I've been knocked out twice, though. But uh, once snow skiing, um, snow take, skiing. Yeah, taking the wrong trail, of course, <laughs> being the daredevil. And uh, once I actually ran into a wall, I, which, yeah, <laughs> right. And I, I was not drinking. I was sober. That's going to be on part two. <laughs> part two, we're going to find out what she did with that wall. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. Um, when you got hit that hard, what does it feel like? Not everybody gets hit. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind true. of a weird feeling. Did you like start seeing things? I mean, did you look like a pink elephant all of a sudden in front of you? What were you looking at? No, I, it's kind of odd. It, it doesn't, um, it's almost like it doesn't hurt, but then it hurts really bad. But it's not like a sharp pain. It's just like you know that you've been hit hard. And then something comes over you, and, and then you question. Um, I don't know, it could be some kind of a, an instinctual thing. You know, do I keep fighting or do I get the heck out of here? Well, you feel it's both a fight those? or flight. It's a fight or flight. I think everybody feels that at some point in their life, um, probably on a lot of different occasions. Uh, <laughs> but for me, that moment was like you think, you're like, wow, do I really want to get hit like that again? I really don't. So I better figure out what I need to do. And all this thought process is actually happening in milliseconds, right? Super fast. You can't be sitting there reading, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do here. <laughs> right. Knocked out immediately. Okay. Right, exactly. That's interesting. I mean, that has to be a really strange feeling. I've been choked out before. Oh. And I, it, it, when I was used to do jiu-jitsu, you, know, you don't notice anything. It's just like you're getting anesthesia. You're out. You're out. It's, <laughs> game's right, over. Right, right. Yeah, you don't even think about it. How mm -hmm. about the other side? Have you ever knocked anybody out? I haven't knocked anyone out. I did uh, drop uh, an, an opponent um, on her butt. In the ring <laughs> with my left hook. So what do you and think? It felt really about great. That time? Oh, felt great. <laughs> <laughs> you even had to get there. Okay. Um, it is an indescribable feeling uh, to be able to, and it's not just because you hit somebody and hurt them. That's not really what it is about boxing. It's all the hard work you put into it, um, the skill set that you acquire, and then going in the ring with an opponent and uh, and outwitting them is really what it comes down to. It's like a chess chess match in there. So when you're able to actually connect with them with all of the skill, all of the conditioning you have, and connect with them where they didn't defend from it. That's, it's exhilarating, so. Uh, That's actually a really good point, because it's not the same as getting into a street fight and having to hit somebody to survive yourself. You both have made a, almost a compact and that it's okay to hit me, it's okay if I go down or you go down. Yeah. And so it's kind of a weird relationship that you actually have with that opponent. Yeah, definitely. So you're you, okay hitting them in a sense. You, yeah, definitely. Yeah. She's okay with hitting me. Sure, and sure. I'm okay with hitting her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know you know that the opponent that's coming into the ring with you has probably trained just as hard as you, has been competing as long as you, and so on. So you're walking in um, expecting a good fight, basically. Excellent. That's really interesting. It's a fascinating world for me. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the world before you get into the ring. So you have a match coming up, and you're going to fight somebody. Um, have you ever been considered the underdog? 
I have, yes. Uh, what I'm, goes on in Carrie's head then? Uh, you know, the thing is, you can't let it get into your head because then it's, it's obviously affecting you in the ring and you just come in and if you do let it get into your head and you're thinking, okay, I'm coming in, I'm the underdog, she's coming and she's the hometown girl, which is what it is, you almost think, well, she probably has a lot more pressure on her than I have. So she's probably more stressed out right now because of all the pressure. I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna do what I do, I'm gonna do what I do best and I'm gonna win. So what happens, here's a quick question for you, when you're in the ring and the hometown girl is not you, you hit her, she goes down, let's say, or, or you know, everybody knows, okay, he, she hit her, she, she got her right here. But nobody says a word. You know, you got a bird chirping or something in the background. Nothing happens. She hits you. <laughs> yes. You're fine. The punch grazes you. <laughs> and the you, crowd goes crazy. Well. Does that affect you in the ring? <laughs> no, you, you know, you, you expect it already. You really do. Oh, you really? Okay. Yeah, you really expect it. So it doesn't really bother you so much. And um, the weird thing about boxing is uh, when you're in the ring, it's almost like being in a movie. And everything is really slow motion, but it's happening like this. But when you're seeing punches coming at you, they're actually coming very slowly and giving you time to react. And um, I think that's adrenaline. Part of it is adrenaline, and you've, you've learned to control your adrenaline through all of your years of training. And so you're able to see things coming at you in a slow manner when they're actually coming very fast. It's a really bizarre thing. It's That's a great it's insight. A, it's a great feeling. Great insight. I, <laughs> yeah. I never thought about that. So let's look at what, what does Carrie have to do to get ready for a fight? I mean, do you have to work out, lift a couple curls and you're done? You're ready to walk out? <laughs> yeah, just a couple curls. Wow, preparing for a fight, that's probably the, the only thing I don't miss um, about <laughs> fighting <laughs> is the preparation. It's, um, there is a lot of running involved. We run a lot of sprints. Um, we also run long distances so every sunday i'd run 14 miles and it's a lot it's a lot ooh, of mental ooh, ooh. yeah <laughs> 14 miles in one day yeah and wow. it would be every sunday and it, and that was it wasn't necessarily conditioning per se because your sprints are really your conditioning for boxing because it's anaerobic it's mm -hmm. very fast bursts of energy but i think the long runs were really meant to um keep your mind strong you know you get to a certain mile and you're like oh my god i can't do this anymore but then you push past it i think it's why a lot of people run marathons it's, well, 14 miles is like a half a marathon. It's a half a marathon, absolutely. That's amazing. Right. Um, weight training? I did. I did some weight training. I do way more weight training now than I did when I was boxing. Um, and I probably should have done more weight training. But, you know, it's kind of, um, you know, water under the bridge now. But, uh, you know, training fighters now, we do more weight training. And it's really just to keep you from getting injuries. Because in boxing, you get a lot of overuse injuries, mm -hmm. uh, especially your shoulders, your back. Uh, so I think weight training is really, really important for boxers. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, diet. Ah, yes. Uh, pretty strict. <laughs> not the George Foreman diet. No, no, not the heavyweight <laughs> diet. Uh, mm. It is, um, we eat clean, of course. I still eat pretty clean, but it is... Um, what do you mean by clean? What kind of foods? Uh, try to really eat a lot more organic. Uh, so no processed, nothing Beef. packaged or canned. Oh, really? That sort of thing. How about beef? Yeah, eat beef um, once or twice a week. Um, um, more, you know, of course, lean white meats like your chicken, your turkeys, um, veggies. fish, veggies, of course, spinach and kale, mostly spinach and kale. How about water? Um, you guys drink a lot of water? A lot of water. <laughs> a lot of water. So, like, we could go through two gallons a day easy. Two um, gallons a day. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, alcohol in or out during the time no, of the competition? No alcohol. Uh, Actually, I don't even, I really don't, don't drink, drink that much anyway. No. Okay. Uh, but competition, definitely no. Mm -hmm. Nothing competition. No, no. Have and you, you ever, can't smoke either. <laughs> do you know any boxers that do? <laughs> I've seen it. Really? Yeah, That'd be yeah. interesting. I never thought about Wasn't that. Wasn't it Mayorga who used to, uh, Mayorga. Smoke, used to <laughs> smoke a cigarette? Yeah. He was one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> It was rather right his fights, wasn't it? Or before the fight or something? I don't know yeah, what he was doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? This kind of leads me to another question. We've got a couple of minutes left, but I'm kind of curious. Do you ever see drugs in the world of boxing in your little, in your world there? No, I haven't. No, okay. never have. No. Interesting. Well, I'm part two. We're going to be talking more about fitness tips with you and learning how people can get ready for this new year to get ourselves in shape. And obviously to be a boxer, you're going to be in great shape. Look at some of these videos that carry is showing here how she's doing things. She's going to show you how to box and how you can incorporate some of these techniques, it seems like, to get in better shape as well. Absolutely. Boxing is great for the average person. It is. You've got it. And I think a lot of average people love the idea of hitting something. 
they do. Yeah. They they love to hit things yeah, and not get in trouble for it. <laughs> my four-year-old loves hitting her daddy, so I know. Um, so if we want to get a hold of you, how do we get a hold of Carrie Williams? Uh, well, you can go to my website, which is Carrie, C-A-R-Y dash Williams dot com. Carrie dash Williams dot com. And your clubs are called Primetime Boxing. Primetime Boxing. And the one in Santa Monica is called The Stables, but it's all under the Primetime Boxing website. And you do exactly what there? So everybody knows you do training. I train folks. Uh, train folks to box. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. Get in That's shape. all we do. Boxing. So if you want to get in great shape and call Kerry Williams, go to Primetime Boxing. Right now, there are three heavily armed men with semi-automatic or automatic weapons somewhere in Southern California. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> yeah, okay. You made me laugh. Thank you. A unique and provocative look at today's current events. We provide the answers and a better understanding of the world around you. So catch Therapy Cable Live, Monday through Friday from 12 to 2 Pacific Time on TherapyCable.com. We had a great show in part one learning about the psychology of a boxer, especially a female boxer. That has different dynamics already. Right. And I know we explored a lot. We explored how did it feel getting hit, how is it being inside the ring. Um, we're going to do a little bit more of that, and then we're going to get some fitness and health tips for the audience and see how they can get in shape this year. So in the ring, when you're in there, uh, what's the longest fight you've had? The longest fight I've had. How many rounds did you go? Uh, four rounds. Um, four rounds, okay. Yeah, but uh, it, I boxed in the amateurs, so I boxed in like national tournaments for the amateurs. Uh, professional boxing, obviously, go up to 12 rounds. Um, the women go up to 10 rounds. So ten it's rounds. a little different. Yeah, for the men and women, it's a little bit different. Is it psychologically different to go from 4 to 10? Or uh, Yeah, I would, I would assume so. You a long so. haul to go. <laughs> the strategy changes, everything changes. <laughs> yeah, a lot. A okay. uh, question I ask every boxer is, who are your idols in boxing? Ah, uh, you know what? I uh, really, really like uh, Joe Lewis. Oh, wow. Going well, way back. Okay. Yeah, and I have a huge mur mural of him at my Santa Monica club. Uh, but Any just particular reason for Joe? Amazing boxer, and his punches were like getting hit by a baseball bat, um, <laughs> yeah. is what his opponent said. And he uh, donated a lot of his purse money to the war efforts. And a lot oh, of people, right. I don't know if they know this or not, but when he actually retired from boxing, the U.S. government went after him for, for taxes and basically oh, yeah. bankrupt him um, when he actually gave all his money to the U.S. government. So um, there's a really great story about him that, you know, maybe people should check out. But, no, that's actually really um, true. It's a good story. Yeah, and he actually, um, uh, it was Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack who offered him a position in Las Vegas to be a doorman. Uh, because everybody loved him, and they said, well, just come out here and be a doorman and wow. make some money, and, and so that's what he did. A boxing champion, a doorman. Right. Yeah. But then that was the only opportunity, but he was given the opportunity by Frank Sinatra. Did you ever get hit by anybody, and you thought, wow, that's a baseball bat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did it make you wonder at that point? Did you go, huh, maybe I shouldn't have picked this one? <laughs> Yeah, you mean pick this one as a sport? Uh, no, pick this opponent. Maybe I should. Oh, maybe well, you don't really this. get to pick your opponent, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you didn't get, especially in tournaments, you just, you know, you have to box whoever's in the tournament in your weight class, and that's a go. Interesting. <laughs> so we got the boxing idols. Now we're going to try to help people, because I know boxing is very strenuous. You burn a lot of calories doing the boxing. What are some health tips you can give us? Oh, actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to be your client. So I walk in the door and I say, Carrie, I want you to train me. So what's the first thing you do? <laughs> oh, boy. We I'm got I'm afraid already. To do. Yes. <laughs> Thank God we're in studio here. Well, uh, what I would do, especially for the eating, I would have you first email me. What do you eat? You know, give me three days of your eating plan. Tell me when you're eating it, what you're eating. And I'm going to go through that and I'm just going to kind of pick it apart. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what your goals are. 
you know, you want to lose weight, you want to gain muscle, you want to just learn how to box, what do you want to do? And then we kind of focus on those, um, you know, facets that you want to work on. So you actually incorporate boxing into the exercise routine? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I incorporate the exercises into the boxing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we do a lot of uh, very real boxing at the club. It's, um, I teach everybody as if they're going to compete. Is it actually so, rap? Oh, they do the yeah the whole bit. So if somebody walked out of my club after a year, they would be already on the road to competition. Even if they had no no, really? they didn't want to compete. I'm still going to train them as if they're going to be a fighter. Um, huh. So and they can appreciate that because you're coming to a boxing gym. You probably want to learn how to box. Okay, so I give <laughs> you my eating plan. You, you pick a part and tell me the Twinkies don't work. Okay. Um, then I go into the first day at the gym. I got my clothes on, ready to rock and roll. What are you going to do? What's the uh, first thing you do? The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to stand. I'm going to show you how to throw a punch. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to skip gate, rope. Huh? Um, show you how to wrap your hands. Skip rope, interesting. Oh, yeah. It's a huge part of the boxing workout. So yeah. We see in Rocky, for instance, that was really how, is that how you skip the rope? In like a, yeah, like, slightly. There yeah. Was, yeah um, that was a great movie. Great motivational movie. I love but, all of them. Yeah. yeah. But there, you know, some of the boxing stuff wasn't really on point, but that's okay. You know, that's not really what it was for. It was a motivational movie. Does it make I mean, I know he was he was jumping rope and it looked like he was jumping rope for hours on end. Um, you can. And he was doing all these little fancy things. Do those things you guys teach that as well? Uh, it takes time to get sure. that down. So there, there's all these baby steps people have to learn. You know, first how to get over the rope. <laughs> and then, you know, we have what's <laughs> called a boxer shuffle. And then we have double ups. And then we can start doing crisscrosses. But you're looking at about a year of training before you're doing, you know, a all year. of the fancy footwork on the rope. How many yeah. days a week uh, should the person come in? They usually come about three days a week. Three days a week. And, yeah. and the length of time in the gym? Uh, 45 minutes to an hour, and they're hitting the speed bag. I mean, they're doing everything that a fighter would do, minus getting in the ring and actually getting hit. Although I do have some people who spar, and, you know, they want to do that to test their skills out. You know, you learn how to throw a punch, you kind of want to test it out. So I come in there, I wrap up, you're going to show me how to wrap my hands, put the gloves on, and then I'm hitting the speed bag. Do you wear special attire? Do I, do I need special boxing shoes? Well, you only wear the wraps for the speed bag. You don't wear gloves for the speed bag. You wear glove, okay. wraps and gloves to hit the punching bag. Um, and attire? No, you wear whatever you want as far as what's comfortable to you. You don't have to wear fancy boxing shoes or wear fancy boxing robe or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so just comfortable tennis shoes and uh, workout gear. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so now we, we're in there. We've worked out. I'm sweating. Um, you're giving me tips on food. Now, what kind of tips would you give me on food? What would you recommend? Eat Again, frequently? it would depend on what you eat already. Let's say I want to lose weight. All oh, right, but still depends on what you already eat. This is the thing oh, with everybody because if you, if I don't know what you eat at all, and I come in and I say, I want you to eat this, this, and this, and it is so far off from what you normally do, you will never stick with it. That's a good point. Never, ever, ever. So you have to kind of, you know, fiddle with what you're already doing and gradually make the changes. Excellent. Now you have to make it a lifestyle. It's not a diet. You have to make a change, a gradual change of eating for your lifestyle that you can maintain and you can stick with um, and that's really important that's a great great advice and what kind of person uh, would you recommend for this program anybody I mean I have uh, teenagers coming in I have uh, I have women I have men I have uh, it's just across the board age wise I have people who come in who are very out of shape some people come in who are athletes as far as they run marathons or they do you know weight training or whatever so it's just across the board. The, the, the thing is that everybody has one goal and they want to learn how to box. It's not, they're not coming to me just because they want to lose weight or just because they want to get fit. It's a lot more up here. It's, and this is a part of the show. I mean, this, yeah. it is, they, they want to come in there, they've gone through something in life maybe. And they say, you know, this is, a, this is in my bucket list. I've always oh, wanted to learn how to throw a punch. I've always wanted to learn how to box. And so now I'm going to do it. You know, maybe they went through a divorce. Maybe there was a death. Maybe, you know, they moved from the East Coast or whatever. Um, they've made a big change in their life, and they want to then partake in this boxing, which is, you know, kind of continues that big change in their life. Um, it's uh, it's life-changing, quite frankly, to a lot of people. That's excellent. Do you ever encounter, since we're, we're now on this do you ever encounter anybody who came in because of domestic violence? Maybe somebody who got hit at home and they want to defend Never. themselves. Never. Never. Well, that ends that question. <laughs> Never. Do you ever get anybody else <laughs> bullying? Maybe. Um, there's a few teenagers that will you know, come in because they're getting picked on, and it's usually not them that is. They're not necessarily coming in. Their parents are bringing them in because they know their parents know what's going on at school, and so they try to get them into. 
Um, Because a lot of kids who get bullied, um, unfortunately, don't even have that kind of um, I don't even know what it's called, the, the chutzpa, what do they call the it? Chutzpah? What's, yeah, to to <laughs> right. take that step to come into the boxing club, but their parents know that they need it, and so they'll bring them in, and, and then they get it. So. What do you think, uh, I, you know, we didn't talk about this before, and I'm just kind of curious what your opinion is of the MMA, mixed martial arts. Hmm. What do you think of that? I think it's great uh, entertainment. I think that it's, you know, obviously it's it's very popular mm-hmm. in the uh, the entertainment world. Um, it's, I noticed that a lot more of the fighters, the MMA fighters are doing a lot more stand up. Yeah. Uh, so you'll see a lot more of them doing boxing. A lot more are learning better hand skills. They call it hands, which is boxing, American boxing. Uh, and so the, we just saw one this last weekend and, and it was mostly boxing. Yeah. So, you know, that's just, it's kind of, people want to see action on your feet. Not a lot of people yeah. want to see you rolling around on the ground. And, you know, that's great. Uh, they're mm-hmm. highly skilled. All of these athletes are highly skilled. Yeah, they're amazing. In a lot of different facets, um, you know, in all combative sports. But I think that boxing is really the key element to MMA and, um, and continuing its popularity. Do you think uh, boxing is a good skill to learn for self-defense? Absolutely. Uh, and I have a lot of people <coughs> who come into the club who maybe have learned other martial arts Um You know, it could be jiu-jitsu, it could be whatever. And they always tell me the same thing. If I would have learned boxing first, everything else would just have been easier. Boxing is the hardest combative sport to learn. So if you do everything else first and then you do boxing, it's much tougher to learn. You're better off learning boxing first and then doing the rest of it. That's very fascinating. And that's only coming from people I've trained. I'm not not just saying it because I'm a boxer, but <laughs> this is what I hear. Would you recommend it? Not actually before I go to that question. I know we talked off camera a little bit and you said or maybe it was on camera. You were talking about how important defense was. Mm. Defense is one of the first things I think you teach. Right. Um, I think it's important for law enforcement. To yeah. Learn defense because they always get in these little scruffs and scrapes and you know it's kind of funny because the first thing the person's going to do is take this wild swing. It's going to take about a half hour before it gets to you. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of interesting for them to learn boxing. I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. I think that they look at it as it being more um, offensive instead of defensive. Oh, interesting. So a lot of them don't learn boxing because they automatically think because they don't know the sport well. They automatically think it's just to hit people, and they don't look at it as being on the defensive. But there are a lot of defensive maneuvers that they could learn from boxing that would help them tremendously. Great. Let's go back to the brain here and fitness. Why don't people? Why do, why do you think people don't get motivated to work out or have such a hard time saying, oh, "I got to go see Carrie today. It's going to be tough." <laughs> um, I feel that way when I have to go work out. <laughs> you do. I do. Well, everybody. There you go. Feel, I I think I won't say everybody, but I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, it, it's kind of like well, the thing is, if it's if it's if it's uncomfortable when you're working out, then it's probably working. Oh, and nobody really likes our human nature. Is like we don't want to be uncomfortable. Yeah. But when you're working out, you are uncomfortable. If it's actually benefiting your body, because you can walk and be very comfortable walking, but guess what? It won't change your body. And if your goal is to change your body, then it's not going to work. Hmm. So um, I think that's a big reason. Nobody so wants to feel do? uncomfortable. So what do you say to somebody? I, I tell you, Carrie, I don't know if I can get up uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning and go work out. <laughs> I say, um, look in the mirror naked. That's what I say. That'll end that. Yeah. <laughs> That'll end that's, that what, quickly. that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> There's my motivation. And Okay. And, um, and how do you keep them? Uh, the program, I'm assuming, is gonna be, you said it's about a year. So how do you keep them motivated? Do they get motivated just because they're moving from one step to another and they're getting more reinforcement and getting more excited about it? That's a big part of it. Hmm. Um, you know, I have relationships with all of my clients, and it's kind of, we call it the Fistic family. The Fistic uh, family. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, but I think that um, they start to learn a skill set, and so maybe they're, they're throwing a combination, and we're working on it and working on it, and they come in again, and uh, it starts to feel right, and they start to feel it throughout their body, and it clicks. There's little, all these little, you know, kind of times where something clicks. The speed bag. They start to hit it, and they've got more rhythm, and that excites them to come in again to practice again. So um, a lot of it is because of the skills that they're learning, um, not necessarily just because, like, I'm losing weight, but although I, I have a lot of people who will text me and say, oh, I couldn't fit in these jeans last year, and now I can. Thank you so much. Uh, so, you know, that's obviously a motivation as well. But a big part of what I do, because I really, truly teach boxing, is that they, um, 
they enjoy learning something new and the challenge of boxing. It's one of the hardest sports to learn. And so they like that challenge. And when they see improvements in their skills, that makes them feel good. So I can imagine. Yeah. So they get motivated for the year. Uh, what, are the, what do you think is the percentage of these people who go through the whole entire year that actually want to go into the ring? Well, uh, my Northern California clubs is a higher percentage than Southern California. I don't really? know why, but it is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, that's a little different. I would say probably maybe 1% of the people who actually come yeah. in and train oh. actually then want to step into the ring. Most of them are males, I'm assuming? Uh, no, I'm fair. It's probably... Uh, I'd say sixty percent. I mean, it's it's a little, bit, a more. little bit more men, but Interesting. yeah, not too many. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Any other health or fitness tips you want to give us before we wrap up here? Uh, you know, it's uh, January, so it's New Year's resolution. You guys have to get into the gym. You have to get do something you love. Don't just you know, oh, I do boxing. You do boxing. You can do whatever you want to do. Just get moving and start eating right, even if you. You know, not just for fitness, but just to feel better. Just to feel better. That's right. Christmas is over. You guys ate bad as it was. <laughs> so how do we get a hold of you, Carrie, if we want to work out, we want to get in great shape, we want to learn uh, more about boxing? Well, you can go to my website, carrie-williams.com. So it's C-A-R-Y-Williams.com. Uh, and also the clubs are under primetimeboxing.com. So primetimeboxing.com. People, you heard the call. Learn how to box. Thank you for being on The Circle, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, wherever the psychology involved, we are there. See you next time, everyone.